Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So. Um, yeah, by the way, uh, I'm going to give you lecture today in, um, on behalf of Prof Professor Chu. Yeah, um, yeah, today is important day for United States. Yeah, he's going to vote. So, um, yeah. Uh, we have one more minute. Um, Um, all right, uh, we are uh, ready to start. Um, can you see the slide and hear my voice? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, so in this week, uh, we're going to um, look at some important theorems in electromagnetics, which are uh, uniqueness theorem and reciprocity theorem equivalence theorem um, yeah, and so on. So today I'm going to cover the uniqueness and uh, some part of the reciprocity theorem. So the first is the uniqueness theorem. The, um, we can ask question to ourselves that if we um, have the source here, um, source mi is the magnet uh, by, by the way actually um i did not write all the in covering the theorems i need uh, many mathematical derivation if i write all the things myself it would take a lot of time so i uh, just prepared all the um equations that we already uh know uh, for example maxwell's equation so it's gonna be it's gonna save um uh, my time um, so that I can give you the physical argument and the meaning of equations instead. So the situation here, if you look at this figure, um, inside of this volume of our interest, we're going to um, apply um, the magnetic current source or electric current source. So it is denoted by Mi and Ji. And the medium is assumed to be lossless, inhomogeneous, and anisotropic. That's why notation is a tensor, okay? Tensor is, uh, you can simply think of a tensor here 
um, as a rank two uh, matrix, just a three by three matrix, because uh, this vector is um, this vector um, is a three by one column vector. So um, then we have um, source here. Then we're gonna um, perform. We're gonna do some um, proof by contradiction. Okay, whether or not the solutions from these sources are really unique. Okay, in order to do that, we're going to assume that uh, there are two kinds of sources from this um, um, same uh, two kinds of field solution uh, from this single source which are first EA and um, HB, just the first set of uh, field solutions. The other one is EB and HB, okay? So after some manipulation, mathematical manipulation, if we make sure um, they are same, then the solutions become um, unique, okay? Otherwise, if they are not the same, then the solutions are not unique, okay? Uh, this is kind of proof by contradiction, okay? So, as you can see, the first set of solution um, with this superscript A satisfied the Maxwell's equation. By the way, Maxwell's e this Maxwell's equations are on uh, frequency domain. That's why we re replace the time derivative um, by this minus j omega here. Oops, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so this is the uh, Faraday's law for first um, Maxwell um, field solution. And this is the Ampere's law, okay? And the uh, second set of solution also satisfy uh, this Maxwell's equation. Um, and then we're going to manipulate these um, four equations. Uh, first step is to uh, subtract um, um, the Faraday's law for these two solutions, Ampere's law, so that uh, we can obtain um, these Maxwell's equations. You can see that there's no more source terms. That's why they're uh, canceled out. Uh, quick question. Yep. Uh, do we consider only dynamic uh, picture here? Don't That's we consider right. the static? That's right. Uh, just we are um, considering electrodynamics uh, problem um, in which uh, the frequency, I mean, the uh, frequency is not a zero. Frequency is not zero, okay? Okay, yeah, thank you. So, um, we can uh, think of this a, uh, EA minus EB as kind of a different solution, okay? If they are same, this uh, delta E should be zero, also delta H should be zero. Uh, they are same if they are same, otherwise um, uh, delta E has non-zero value, okay? So, yeah, we can write uh, Maxwell's equations for this different solution. Uh, that still satisfies this Maxwell's equation, but a sourceless uh, Maxwell's equation. By the way, um, we have already uh, studied the condition for lossless medium. Um, that was um, this tensor. Make, uh, this tensor should be related to, I mean, it is kind of um, Hermitian matrix so that this equality should be satisfied. This dagger is Hermitian conjugate. Um, and also mu should, uh, should be Hermitian tensor. This is a lossless condition. And what we're going to next is that um, just the manipulation. We're going to um, 
go over this complex pointing vector. We have already uh, studied about complex pointing vector and complex uh, pointing theorem. So divergence of the um, different solution of electric field um, cross product with the um, complex conjugate of the delta H. And then by applying the vector calculus um, identity, we can obtain uh, this kind of, we can expand this divergence of um, delta E cross delta H. And um, let's look at the first term, okay, here. So, we can substitute the uh, uh, Faraday laws here uh, to this um, uh, term. Then um, it's gonna be uh, minus j omega delta h uh, complex conjugate dot mu tensor dot delta h. In the similar fashion, uh, we can rewrite uh, the second term of this equation on the right hand side um, as the j omega delta e dot e um, epsilon tensor complex conjugate dot e uh, delta e complex conjugate. So it looks like uh, energy um, stored in the volume, okay? Energy stored in the volume V on the other, but um, there's J omega term, so that it's gonna be a variation, okay? This is the magnetic energy, and this is the electric energy. And then, um, this is the left-hand side of this equation. And this is the uh, right hand side uh, by using this um, equality, then um, we have uh, this equality. Um, are there any questions so far for a mathematical manipulation? Okay, um, now we are gonna do next is taking um, volume integral over uh, V uh, to this equation, okay? So that the left-hand side uh, take the form of this. And then um, this is gonna be our right-hand side. We can uh, rewrite this left-hand side by using um, Gaussian uh, Gauss divergence theorem. Okay, so that uh, we can replace this volume integral with the surface integral over the um, boundary of the volume V, which denoted by S. Which, uh, um, is the boundary of the volume V. So uh, we have the uh, following surface integral. Integral going to is just the delta E cross delta H um, complex conjugate. <clears throat> now, uh, you know, um, we're going to make uh, this surface integral term go to zero, okay? Then um, in order for the surface integral to be zero, um, what boundary conditions do we need? Uh, does anybody um, can answer what, which kind of boundary conditions uh, for this surface integral to be zero? Um, uh, for example, the first, we can just make um, one of these terms to be zero, delta, either delta E, delta H. So in order 
for um, delta E um, on the surface to be zero, what boundary condition? The tangential component of electric field um, is going to be zero. Does anybody know? Uh, you mean just n cross e equals to zero? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think it's that simple. <laughs> oh, um, just the electric field. Um, I mean that this is the surface. So this is going to be normal vector at the surface and just the electric field. Um, N cross electric field to be zero. And what boundary condition on this surface? Uh, which was uh, P, uh, perfect electric conductor. Uh, the surface of the perfect electric conductor the condenser component of electric field should be zero, right? So PEC, or in order for this surface integral to be zero, uh, we can make this uh, tangential component of the magnetic field um, zero. Um, those kind of boundary condition was, uh, I mean, a perfect uh, magnetic conductor. Okay, so P and C, or um, um, mixed version of this P, C, and P, M, C. I mean, the, let's say this is the surface of the volume, and the part of the surface uh, can be P, E, C, or the part of the, um, the part of the um, surface can be P, M, C. That's the mixed version. Under these three, con uh, three kinds of boundary conditions, uh, this surface integral uh, goes to zero, okay? What that means is that um, this, uh, this volume, our volume, our volume uh, should be enclosed uh, by uh, PEC or PMC, it's a cavity. Okay. Uh, so what if it, it's not enclosed by PC or PMC? What will happen? Yeah, um, if we're gonna cover um, the following slide, what happens if we do, do not have like this uh, PC and PMC, okay? For example, the open boundary, something like that. Uh, but uh, uh, we first, um, we first um, look at uh, situations under this um, boundary condition first. Um, then um, the surface integral zero so that we have uh, this equation, okay? So then uh, let's look at this term. Um, is this a real value or uh, imaginary value? So uh, because the medium is the low slip, um, it should satisfy the Hermitian conjugate. Again, I can write in this way. So if we um, remember the what happens, um, I mean, the eigenvalue of the Hermitian matrix uh, in the linear algebra. If this uh, matrix is Hermitian um, conjugate, then the eigenvalue is going to be always real value, okay? So that if we uh, move this uh, V vector to the left-hand side, um, then um, it's going to be uh, real. So it's very fair, uh, fairly similar to these uh, two terms, okay? Again, because this is Hermitian conjugate. So that uh, this term is real, purely real value. And then 
uh, we can uh, cancel out this term. Then uh, we have, uh, eventually we have this um, equation. Um, you can see that the physical meaning of this left-hand side term is the total energy stored in uh, volume B. Um, however, this is gonna be uh, always Um, so in order for this integrand to be zero, then um, this first and second term, because this first term has a minus sign and second term has a plus sign, if, there's, if this term and this term have the same value, they're canceled out. So that um, delta H and delta E, um, does not have to be, um, have, don't have to be zero, okay? Still, um, we can make the zero uh, net energy. What that means is that um, like the first solution, our field solution, and our second solution don't have to be uh, same. That means that the solutions are not unique. Under the uh, low solid medium, and they're enclosed by PEC or PMC. Um, any questions so far? So, but this situation is not real meaning that we have to proceed further? Um, you mean this is not physical? In real, um, in our real world, you can uh, observe. Did you mean that? Yeah, you have no lossless medium and you have no PC or PMC. Yeah, that's right. Um, it is ideal case. In our real world, there's no um, uh, perfectly uh, lossless medium so that um, yeah you can observe this um, non-uniqueness in our real world but very hard to um, observe this thing so it turns out that uh, in order for solution uh, to be unique we um, should have loss or gain, okay, in our uh, medium. So let's look at, let's consider um, ice, isotropic loss in medium in this case, so that the tensor is replaced by just the, um, the scalar value, or um, mu is also replaced by scalar value, but um, there's loss or gain, we have imaginary term in our medium. So um, this equation, okay, this is equation can be rewritten in this way. Again, this is just the scalar, um, scalar, um, this term can be reduced in this way. The same fashion, we can reduce the electric uh, field term much simpler this way. So, if we plug, if we plug this mu and epsilon, then um, um, this is the um, this is the real part of the this equation. That's because um, if we plug the mu here, then the mu is going to be mu dash minus j mu double dash, and the j and j are canceled so that we have a real part of this equation, and the imaginary part is going to be the volume integral of the uh, j omega mu dash and the delta h squared, and also, and um, plus 
j omega epsilon dash and the delta e squared. Okay. It should be zero. So we're gonna um, find some conditions, um, conditions of the delta e and delta h um, that make um, this um, equality. So let's look at the uh, real part. Actually, this square term is the positive real value, but um, due to this uh, minus term, these two terms are always uh, negative definite, okay? Always negative value. So the sum of negative values um, to be zero, this term should be, should be zero. There's no way to make, um, satisfy this condition. They should be zero, okay? Um, so that uh, in this case, we can say that um, EA and EB and HA and AQ. So solutions are unique from a single source. Uh, by the way, um, if this mu um, double dash and epsilon double dash are positive values, they represent the loss, loss of medium. Okay. If mu and epsilon are positive value, they are uh, loss. On the other hand, um, if they are negative value, again, gain means that um, like a um, it models like an active surface. Okay. So that the medium uh, pumps the energy to the uh, volume. So, okay, the solutions are unique. Mm. Um, are there any questions? So far, okay. So actually, uh, this situation is very similar uh, to the null space solution in linear algebra. For example, uh, this is our linear system. B uh, describes kind of driving force, kind of source, and the x is our solution. A is kind of operator or matrix uh, modeling like a um, Carl or um, Hel I mean, Hel um, Laplacian operator, something like that. But if there is no source, uh, this solution is called a null space solution. And um, These models, like this source list uh, Maxwell's equation, so uh, for the specific condition of this A matrix, you have um, the homogeneous solution, so that it is very similar to the um, not non uniqueness of solutions, so to the situation that we described uh, before. And actually, uh, this uh, delta, non-zero delta E and delta H describe the uh, resonance solution. It means that without any excitation, without any uh, sources, we have a non-zero solution that are uh, resonance solution. A resonance solution can exist inside of the PEC uh, loosely cavity, uh, so that um, in that case, due to the presence of the resonant uh, mode, the field uh, cannot be unique. Um, 
this situation uh, can be thought of it as like um, can be described by um, by the um, input and output relation of the circuit. We have learned uh, from the um, signal um, analysis course that we can describe the any linear time invariant system by using a uh, system um, a transfer function. And if this uh, transfer function include the poles, the poles lie on the real axis of the uh, frequency that poles describe the uh, resonance of the system. So that let's say this is our um, input uh, Fourier uh, spectrum, and this is our output um, signal. An output signal can be given by the um, Fourier, I mean, the this integral equation. On the other hand, at um, omega is the omega pole. The transfer, transfer function cannot be defined so that our uh, integral is going to be indefinite. So that describes the presence of the non uniqueness um, of the solution. So uh, in order uh, for this integral to be definite, what we um, often, what we uh, usually do is to introduce very small uh, loads to the pole, okay? So that the location of the pole is um, translated a little bit above the um, real axis of the frequency. In that case, uh, this integral um, is going to be definite. So that uh, solutions are unit in the same fashion. So you can think of like the presence of non uniqueness um, with this, um, the pole translation by introducing a small load. Um, so what we have discussed so far is um, we assume that the boundary of this volume is kind of PEC or PMC for their mixed version. But what happens um, if the still our volume is not um, enclosed by PEC or PMC? Um, so let's consider like this situation. This is the PEC volume. And um, we make the size of the, this cavity very, very large, okay? But still, um, there are a lot of resonant nodes uh, which can be uh, supported by this cavity, large cavity. And then we introduce infinite, infinite small uh, loads. And then we make the radius of this cavity, I mean, the size of this cavity uh, goes to zero, uh, goes to infinity, okay? So we can imagine that if there is a source in the middle of this cavity, then the uh, field uh, produced by these sources uh, never came back to the source, that's because um, the size of this cavity is infinite, and due to the infinite small loads, the field produced from this source never came back. That means that uh, we can think of this equation. Um, there is some loads, okay? That's because again, the field never came back to the source. Uh, this kind of radiation is called, uh, um, I'm, I mean, loss is called the radiation loss. 
due to this radiation loss, uh, solutions uh, can be unique. So um, in um, that means that actually there is called a summer fell summer fell radiation condition radiation boundary condition. So if we use the summer fell radiation boundary condition, even if we have a lossless medium. And due to the radiation condition, meaning that the field produced from source never came back to the source, uh, so that uh, we can have a unique solution. Meaning this is open boundary. Um, Ivan, uh, did you mean uh, your question? Can I can be answered with this um, argument. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you say it again, please? If you ask about uh, what happens if we have an open boundary, so um, in open boundary, due to the radiation loss, even if we have a lossless medium in our volume, um, solutions can be unique. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, that answers my question. Yeah. So then uh, the conclusion of, of this unique, uh, uniqueness theorem is that uh, solutions cannot be unique over uh, lossless loss medium enclosed by uh, PEC or PMC boundary condition. The source of making non-uniqueness was the uh, presence of the resonant mode that can be supported um, without any excitation of, excitations of source current. So we have two, um, there are two ways. First, to make solutions to be unique. Uh, first, is we can include, we can introduce loss, either loss or gain, or uh, we can use the open boundary condition or the summer cell radiation condition. So are there any questions so far on the uh, uniqueness theorem? Um, a quick question. Uh, you mentioned isotropic loss. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what will happen if we have an isotropic? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, the mathematical derivation becomes uh, very complicated, but um, the same um, argument, we can draw the same argument. Actually, that derivation, I, I think that derivation is, um, um, you can you can see the lecture notes. Then um, the professor Chu covers like that anisotropic case, the uh, lossy medium. But the same case, I think, if we have a loss loss in anisotropic medium, then we have the unique solution. The mathematical derivation would be very complicated. Um, yeah. And then let's um, move on to the uh, second theorem, which is, is the reciprocity theorem. Okay. So um, we're going to consider the situation here. So we have a medium and the vacuum. And we have the source on the left and the source on the right, two sets of sources. They are independent, meaning that uh, the, in the first scenario, we just turn on the first set of, uh, first set of sources. 
so that it will produce the field e e1 and h1 and the, in the other um, scenario um, we just turn on the second set of so, uh, sources it will uh, produce the second set of uh, field solution denoted by e2 and h2 so uh, we're going to um, relate these two independent solutions somehow actually that is the result of the reciprocal theorem then um, again they are maxwellian meaning that each set of solutions should satisfy the maxwell's equation again i assume this medium is anisotropic um, and inhomogeneous so that it is a tensor so again we need to do some mathematical manipulation so we um let's um let's simplify uh, this term divergence e1 cross h2 okay so by vector uh calculus identity again we can expand this term to here and then we can go over the first term and um, by plugging the Faraday laws right hand side of this Faraday law to here then um, we have like magnetic energy term and uh, magnetic energy inner product between magnetic field uh, with the magnetic current density and also we can do uh, for we can do the same thing for the second term uh, we have electric energy and the electric inner product between electric field and electric current uh, this is the e1 cross an h2 okay and the, uh, at the same time we, we do the same thing for the uh, e2 cross h1 and in a similar fashion we can derive at this term i uh, sorry question uh, right. on the previous slide just okay. follow up yeah uh in the last two equalities uh for now even even basically for that slide uh do you consider the fields uh complex or real uh these are all complex values so uh, why then we uh, write that inner product uh, without complex conjugating one of the terms? Um, right. Um, actually, this is not uh, some physical process. It is not just quite the physical process, but just the mathematical manipulation um, so that we can draw some physically uh, meaningful result. Okay. So by the way, um, yeah, I know um, the uh, your question. Uh, so for example, this one, if this equation, um, I mean, E1 cross H1, they are if they are uh, yeah they are phasor form of the electric and magnetic field so we should have the complex conjugate here so that this term describes um complex pointing vector right however this does not describe the complex pointing vector that's why this is the e1 and this is the h2 and they are independent solutions e1 and h1 um, um, are field generated by the um, the first set of solution while the second set of solutions are turned up at the same time this e and h2 produced by the second set of solution while uh, this first set of solution um, sources are turned up so this is um, this does not discuss any of the physical um, phenomenon, but just the mathematical manipulation. 
Yeah, I'm wondering about mathematics because, well, you see in this uh, uh, fifth, uh, fifth equality, you have like uh, doubles, double scalar product. What does it return? I, I'm just wondering what is the value? Is it scalar as it should be or something else? This whole thing? Uh, yeah, you see the, the last term on the right-hand side. Last term. Yeah, what is this? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, um, this is not correct. It should be cross here, right? This is pi placing. Yeah, yeah, this, that, that this, makes this, more this sense. Oh, you asked about this typo. Yeah, this should be uh, cross product. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. This is typo. So that, yeah, the second term should be um, in this way. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, I, I, I probably, I, I'm a little bit confused by those dots mm -hmm. um, in the last equalities, but anyways, I yeah, yeah, yeah. understand what happened there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we can do uh, these two uh, manipulations and then um we're going to assume that the medium um tensor um is same to the transpose each own uh, tensor at the end it's gonna describe the uh, it's gonna be the reciprocal it represent the reciprocal medium okay not um, permission conjugate, but this transpose. So if this tensor is transpose, um, um, and satisfy this equality, then we can um, figure out that these two terms are the same. So for example, we can uh, write this situation in the linear algebra. Um, so let's say the H1 is kind of Y vector and uh, mu is a A matrix and um, H2 is X. Actually, uh, this is the vector um, calculus notation so that this H1 um, in, um, impl implicitly accounts for the transpose operator. So we need a um, transpose operator here in terms of linear algebra notation. So if we take the transpose to the whole um, term here, then it's gonna be X transpose and A uh, transpose and Y, okay? So that um, if A matrix is the same pitch on um, transpose, then it's gonna be same. So that um, they are same, okay? Uh, likewise, um, these two terms are same. So if we subtract um, equation um, two from equation one, then um, these terms is canceled, these two terms are canceled so that we only have these um, terms in a product between field and the uh, current source. So the next, what we're gonna do is the taking the, again, the volume integral so that the left-hand side also can be replaced by surface in integral by using Gauss divergence theorem. The right, this is gonna be our um, right-hand side. 
And then we consider two different cases. The first one is that in our, um, the volume of our interest, there is no sources. So sources are in, excluded in, uh, from our um, volume. So then um, this volume integral, I mean, the source terms are all zero, so that this whole term, uh, this whole integral is going to be zero, so that um, this we can have this equality. This is called the uh, Lorentz reciprocity theorem without sources. And um, um, the other situation in this case, um, the sources are in included in our volume V. And then um, I'm going to assume the uh, size of this volume is very, very large. Again, so that the surface of this volume uh, goes to infinity. So on that surface, in that surface, this is kind of part of this um, infinite surface. The field produced by uh, sources almost look like a plane wave, okay? Actually, uh, sources generate the spherical wave, but locally, this on the surface of this um, infinitely large surface, that sur uh, spherical wave look like a plane wave, so that um, our uh, magnetic field it can be described by wave vector plus E2 or um, wave vector plus by E1, which is the H1 and it is H2. So uh, E1 cross H2 can be rewritten in this way by using plane wave approximation. And then by using the vector identity, we have this um, equality um, and also E2 cross H1 as this uh, uh, result. So um, we can plot Um, I mean, for, uh, for to this equation, we can plug our result to E1 cross H2, uh, this term, and E2 cross H1, this term, and then uh, we can figure out that um, these terms are uh, canceled out because they are same. And also um, the plane wave has this um, relation. I mean, um, electric field is orthogonal to the uh, wave vector. This is the property of the plane wave so that it goes to zero. So what that means is that the, the surface integral goes to zero. So we have um, only the volume integral for source term. And then um, again, the surface integral goes to zero. And if we rearrange the volume integral for source term, then we have uh, this equation. So meaning that um, this is the uh, generalized reciprocity theorem. Actually, it is hard to find. Um, it is hard to find um, a physical intuition from this equation, unlike the uh, complex point and vector theorem. But um, it is very useful for uh, practical situations. For example, let's say um, this is the source one also. I'm going to assume that the magnetic current is zero. Then um, let's say the source one generates some electric field here. And then by taking just the one um, experiment, by taking one experiment, then we know the electric field. 
I mean, the second electric field from the J2 by using um, this equation. That's because um, E2 dot J1, I mean, the where magnetic currents are zero, E1 dot J2. So by taking one experiment with the uh, J1, source J1, you know, the electric field E1 at the position of the second source, then uh, yeah, you can deduce E2 by um, arbitrarily um, current um, source, I mean, the second source. So this is the um, reciprocity theorem. And also this reciprocity theorem, um, is applied, I mean, uh, it's widely used to test whether or not the medium, medium is the uh, reciprocal or this reciprocity theorem is used to the circuit uh, theory so that the configuration of the circuit, I mean, this is the input one, input two, whether or not this um, circuit is reciprocal or not. Um, there's, um, there's none, there's kind of none uh, reciprocal medium. We have learned, I mean, all the medium does not satisfy uh, this relation. I mean, not, not transpose. It's non reciprocal medium. Uh, for example, uh, we have learned about gyro, um, gyro magnetic medium or uh, ferrite uh, biased by static magnetic field. They're not um, reciprocal medium. So those kinds of um, uh, materials are widely used to design the isolators in RF circuits. So I, I, uh, isolator plays an important role to uh, block any um, RF leakage to the um, DC circuit or um, block any um, interaction between um, antenna or waves. Okay. Um, yes, are, are there any questions so far? Okay, um, that's the process here. Yeah, this uh, uniqueness and reciprocity theorem, we did uh, some um, complicated looking mathematical manipulation to draw, to uh, derive some um, meaningful results. Again, the uh, uniqueness theorem. Um, in the uniqueness theorem, we have um, assumed that from the same source, we have assumed that if there are two possible um, different solutions, um, and then we have defined this uh, different solution here. If different solution is zero, then they are unique, but um, solutions were not unique under in the presence of the lossless medium enclosed by PEC or PMT material. So we, uh, in order for the solution to be unique, we should introduce the loss or gain terms uh, to the medium. Okay. The other way we can make the solution to be unique was to introduce the open boundary instead of closed boundary so that uh, we have radiation loss. Again, the field generated by sources never um, can come back and came back to the, our sources. So that, uh, that place kind of loss. So solutions uh, were able to be unique. Um, so, no question?
I think um, a bit earlier, we finish it a bit earlier. So, um, actually, I do have a quick question. So, back on back in your example for antenna radiation, can you go over what the boundary conditions are for the summer fell radiation? So, in this case, for the for the open boundary with the cavity, um, that you won't invoke the the case where before that you had talked invoke the uh, boundary condition for PEC, so that wouldn't hold in this case, right? Um, yes, you can. Um, you can make the uh, cavity very large. I mean. You can start from the cavity boundary condition uh, from cavity. And uh, in order to derive this um, uh, radiation boundary condition, so lossless cavity, uh, make it very large and plus um, infinite small losses, very, very small losses, almost negligible. But uh, the size of the cavity is infinite. That infinite small, small uh, loss will uh, induce the case, induce the uh, result that the field from the source never came back to the sources. They are uh, propagating to the infinite. So that um, in those situations can be modeled by um, radiation boundary condition. Okay, got it, thank you. Okay, um, yeah, if, if you don't have any question, um, we can stop here, but let me, um, I'll let you know that today's office hour will be at 8 p.m. And Professor Chu will, uh, will be there so that you can ask any questions to Professor Chu at office hour as well, okay? All right, yeah. Thank you uh, for attending this lecture and uh, I'll let you go. Thank you, Dr. Ma. Thank you.